Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Gifted Monkey TV, all things toy and toy related. I'm your host Jordan Preston and when we come back, we're going to look at a mega action figure that looks kind of cool but is sure to drive you batty, either in a good way or a bad way, one way or the other. Come back and see what we're talking about. Respect the monkey! Welcome back, guys, and first off, let me tell you a little secret behind the scenes. Everybody's a little abuzz here at the Gifted Monkey Studio, because guess what? Today that we're filming, it's my birthday, so happy birthday to me. But you know what? Rather than be out doing crazy stuff and enjoying all kind of other things, I'm here enjoying my time with you guys, because I got a special thing in the mail for my own birthday gift, and I couldn't wait to share it with you guys, so let's get right into it. Look at this. Right here, we have the Hot Toys, brand spanking new Hot Toys, one-fourth scale Dark Knight Rises 18-inch action figure. Isn't this great? Look at this nice, smooth box. Let's take a look at what we got here. Sideshow and Hot Toys give you a nice box that the Dark Knight comes into. It comes with like a 3D-looking look of the Dark Knight himself right there on it. Nice, smooth, pithy looking logo here of Sideshow, Batman across here, the Dark Knight Rises embossed on it, and all kind of like little techie um, uh, wizards, gizmos all through, running through the box, like almost like a screen of a computer or something running through the box, very techie. You turn it around, it comes a nice little side Batman embossed again here. On the back, it gives you all the Hot Toys and Disha, the sculptor, where it's come from, where Hot Toys is, and all that vital information about Hot Toys and this particular sculpture, how it was made. Very nice, and the box has a nice texture. You can hear me rubbing the ribbing of it. It has a nice texture to it. Very nice. I'm going to crack this open. I can't wait to see how it looks inside. Let's share it. Hot Toys gave you a boatload of accessories with this dynamic one-fourth scale Batman Dark Knight Rises figure. So let's start out with some of these. First of all, you get a bunch of hands. You get two, four, six, eight. Eight. Eight hands. So four sets of hands you get. The open open hand, kind of a dr static, dramatic pose hand. A few gun-holding gun hands for right or left. Two fists for right and left, and these relaxed hands for right and left. You get four face changes. Well, not face changes, but bottom half of the mouth uh, changes right here. The pouting mouth one, the closed lipped one, the angry, oops, the angry aggressive one. Where's the detonators? Where's those detonators? Sorry, had to do that. And you get the uh, the slightly talking, mumbling one. <laughs> Sorry, Christian Bale, I love it. And you get that. Now, you also get a Christian Bale head. Now, the sculpt on this head is really, really nice. They did a great capture of Christian Bale on this. Look at that. All the way around, we'll take a full rotation of it. Really, really nice, nice, nice look at that head. And the paint apps on this are really good. You get to, It looks almost like a, a translucent look. Very nice. And, of course, the gloss eyes that Hot Toys is known for. Just a really nice... I think it's one of the best Bruce Wayne head sculpts we've seen from either Interbay or Hot Toys so far. You get a vacant mask in case you want to put the Bruce Wayne head on and have Batman holding his mask or his mask near his feet. You get a collar to put on for your Bruce Wayne transition of the head. So the collar goes right there. You put that over. I'll show you later on. You get the glow-in-the-dark sonar night vision Batman with the lights turning on right there. There we go. And these lights have a nice brightness to them. Really good. And look at the head sculpts on these masks. Very good. They look almost like the hard graphite masks that were in the movies. And you just flick it on with the switch on the bottom underneath right in here. Like that. And 
turns it on, turns it off. And then you get the basic Batman with the Bruce Wayne eyes in it. Christian Bale eyes set right there. Nice like that, even the dark around the eyes. That's very great. Now for those of you who are wondering what this hole is in here, this is where you plug in the mouthpiece. Goes right in there, sits in there very firmly, and there you have it. And you can interchange any mouth with that. As you guys see, comes out easy like that. Goes right in like this. And then there it is. Wonderful. On the whole, on the whole, Hot Toys did a really great job with this. But I'll get into some of my gripes a little later on with this. Not a perfect figure, but this is really, really nice what they did with the head sculpts. And with the rest of the accessories. Speaking of which, let's go into that right now. Right before we get into all the details of these accessories, I forgot one little detail of the head sculpt. On this Hot Toys head of the Batman Dark Knight Rises, they also give you rotating eyes, almost like on the Hot Toys Hulk and a few of the Intebay uh, figures. You have rotating eyes, and Hot Toys did a nice little thing this time to give you these like plastic little tweezers. So when you raise the head, you see the two widgets right there? You can stick your hand in there and just adjust it with the widgets. This also will work well on your other... Um, figures that have uh, widgets on them that you need to move the head like the Hot Toys Hulk and things like that. Very nice that they included this. So yes, rotating eyes on this particular head scope of the Dark Knight Rises. Now let's look at our accessories. One of the great things that Hot Toys did with this particular Dark Knight uh, one-fourth scale figure is they try to give you all accessories from all three Dark Knight movies, from key points of all three movies, which is really exciting when you think about it. So let's look at what they gave you. They gave you the sticky bomb. They gave you the grapple gun with a grapple gun holder. Goes right in like this. Rests nicely on the back of his utility belt. They gave you grapples for the grapple gun. Insert easily right into the pegs. Very nice. Nice sculpt on the grapple gun, by the way. They give you this ultrasonic drill, which can flap up and close on his belt like that, on his utility belt. And you can open it like that and then press the lever down, and there's the drill. Move it up. Drill's gone. And then fold it over. There you go. On his utility belt, it hangs. They give you a nice another canister to hang on his belt. Really nice. They give you a radio act a radioactivity detector. Isn't that cool? And it opens and closes. Very nice. Hangs on his belt. And another square box to hang on his belt. They give you three batarangs, but I'm just using two for the sake of the uh, video today. And look at what else they give you. You get the sticky bomb gun. Isn't this cool? It assembles real easy. You just stick the holes in the two pegs here. Nice and easy. It closes up like that. And then you just open it up. Bang, bang, bang. And there it is. Shoulder rest and the handheld grip right there. Even has digital readout on the side. Very nice. Very nice detail on that. A lot of movable parts they gave you with their accessories. All these parts move and intertwine. I love that. They gave you the electric magnetic pulse gun that he uses in the movie of Dark Knight Rises. That closes up like that. Flick it over. On the bottom has a little light switch and an LED light comes on. Look at that. Nice. These are strong lights too. Nice detailing on the uh, magnetic pulse gun too, by the way. And they give you the backpack that he used in The Dark Knight when he was on the uh, building in Japan. That clips right onto his back with these two little clips. Hangs right on his back. It's simple looking, but when you put it on, it looks really cool. And if that weren't enough, look what else they give you. Here you get a mask of Bane. 
Isn't that wonderful? Look at that. It's like they ripped it right off of Bane's face because it's all tattered in the back like it was torn off his face. Nice. They give you the Joker's mask from Dark Knight. And it's in scale. Really nice looking. This is like a rubber. Bane is like a hard plastic. And they give you this great base. I put this on the base. It's kind of hot glued on there for me. But this is the Scarecrow's mask from Dark Knight Begins. Batman Begins, rather. There we go. That's the Scarecrow mask. This is like a rubber. Hard rubber. Nice little detail base. You just stick these in the slots. Rubble. And that's where the other Batarang is. I put it on there for effect. Nice little The Dark Knight Rises nameplate. Very cool stuff. Look at that base. And the stand goes right in there. The regular crotch stand goes right in there. All right, guys. Now the time we've all been waiting for, let's take a look at this action figure and see what's going on with it. All right, here's the figure, the actual Batman 1 4th scale, 18 inch Hot Toys Dark Knight Rises action figure right here, guys. Here he is right here in all his glory. I just want to show you a quick peek of him before we get into the articulation. Then I'll go into some things about the costume and some of the gripes I had about this outfit. It wasn't all roses for me with this figure. So here we go. First of all, articulation. Batman's head comes off. As we know, it has interchangeable heads. It's, it has a thick magnet right in his neck, which allows you just to see. You see that? Look, at, I'll just let it go, and it jumps right on there. The magnet's very strong, but it allows you to get very, very good movement in his head. Extreme movements down to the side, to the back, so you get total, total movement in the head. And you also get neck movement, so you neck it down, it's really extreme, You're looking off of a rooftop, looking up. Doesn't bend that far back, but with the magnet head, you can get a really good up look like that. Shoulders, you get a nice sweeping shoulders, but his uh, shoulder guards are going to inhibit the, his movement, as well as the fabric material underneath the padding is going to hinder his movement. So you get about this much, up to the top of your peak shoulders, that. Shoulders can go back on a ratchet to about this far, up forward to about that far. And that's on right and left. You get a nice elbow, hear that ratchet? You get a nice elbow bend. Elbows just bend up and forward, not back any further than that. Wrist comes up slightly. Get wrist articulation, can swivel back a little bit and forward a little bit. Hands fully rotate. Batman doesn't have really much of an ab crunch. He does have a stomach crunch. You can go stomach down here a little bit at his waist, but no, no uh, rib ab crunch. And the rubber of his suit uh, kind of greatly restricts his turning abilities. There we go. So you get about that. Dropped his grapple gun. Look at that. Grapple gun fell out. That ain't cool, Dark Knight. What's going on, brother? There we go. His legs, because once again, because of the suit, you get hip rotation, slight, and it tells you in the directions, don't move him around too much from his hips and his thighs because it, will, it could possibly cause a tear in the fabric underneath his groin area and his thigh. So don't move it too severely. Once you get it in a severe pose, if that's what you want to do, you got to leave it. You can't keep posing him every week or changing it every day. You got to keep it pretty much where you pose him. Knee bend, you get a knee bend up to about that much. That's about it. Back down. Because of the boots, these are actual, look like, feel like they're actual boots that are put on. So they're not like a part and then another part and another part where the boot is sculpted on. Looks like there's actually a boot that they put on that goes up there. You get that much in the ankle movement, ankle pivot, that much down. Nice leaping or jumping pose you can get with that if his leg moves more severely. You can turn the ankle around like that to get that little knee swivel all the way around if you want. And that's on the right and the left. And that's pretty much the basic moves of Batman, which is a little bit of my, my problem. They don't, now let me tell you some of the gripes I had with this figure as we're looking at this figure. Yeah, like I said, it wasn't all roses with this Batman. 
this guy, he doesn't have any, 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 any um, ab crunch, strong ab crunch. Now, if you remember, we looked at the NECA Superman, and that thing was only, what, 90 bucks, 100 bucks, and it had an ab crunch, and a nice severe ab crunch, which was good for a flying Superman. This doesn't have any ab crunch. Now, the other thing I have a, a problem with is the materials used. This looks very cheap. This is a fabric underneath. Now, the fabric is not tight on him. It's kind of loose and almost a little bit baggy, actually. See how my hand can move it around like that? It's kind of baggy. And then you got this nice, not nice, but a little plastic piece here that's supposed to indicate more like a Kevlar-type feel or protection for him. It's just a little plastic. It's just a little, like, vinyl plastic uh, patched on to the fabric. The shoulder pads and the chest, these are rubber. This is a kind of a hard rubber. My problem with this is, in the movies, it was like a hard graphite. This should have been like a very hard plastic, almost like if you hit it, it like, feels like think, 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 like that. It should have been a hard plastic, which should have been no problem for them to do because they do make materials like that for action figures. Instead of this rubber. This part could have been rubber because we know that his ab parts for his movement could have been rubber, but the chest part could have been a harder plastic as well as the side guards. Could have been like a graphite plastic, almost like what they did with the helmet. They made it a hard graphite feeling plastic, but they did not do it around here. It failed. The other part is, I did not like the waist. This guy has a blocky waist. Now, yes, I know Christian Bale in the movie and a regular person getting inside a bat suit is going to have kind of like a non-defining body. But we've got to remember, this is a superhero we're talking about. So this isn't like John McClane putting on a suit, jacket, or some hero putting on a jacket, a Lone Ranger with his jacket, and he can't see his body parts. This is a superhero, one of the premier superheroes of all time. He should have a heroic body sculpt, which means his body should go in a little bit here at the waist, like that. Now, they did a nice job with a flat tummy. I know a lot of people were concerned that he have a kind of like a little beer belly because of the rubber padding on his body. Didn't happen. They did a nice job of keeping it flat. But there's no V-shape. There's no discernible V-shape in this hero body type. It looks like a nice, big, straight down line. See, there's no lat spread to make it look heroic. There's no tapering in of the waist. And even if that was not true humanly, for a superhero figure, they should have cheated it a little bit and gave you a little more of a heroic figure, like a tapered in more waist, even if it was a little bit unrealistic. Now, I'm not talking about severe. His waist is this big and his shoulders are that big. And I'm not talking about severe change, but just enough that we all know that that's a heroic look. He had a V shape, and they could have done that. Uh, the rubber here feels kind of cheap. It feels like um, motorcycle pants rubber, like the, the rubber or the vinyl that you find in a, a motorcycle action figure with his pants, almost like a Terminator. It feels like that. It doesn't feel like it could protect somebody, for one, and it doesn't feel uh, very realistic for a superhero. It just feels like padding, and I didn't like that at all. Once again, it's kind of baggy. The, the material underneath is actual material, but it should have been tighter, more form-fitting. See, when I pull it close like that, it should have been a little more form-fitting, in my opinion. So I didn't like that about it. Also, the cape gives you a big, hard time. Now, I'm going to do this, guys. It took me a long time to get this cape in kind of right, but the cape comes in these clips, and you're supposed to stick the cape into these holes, and they don't fit right. And I've heard other people gripe about that, too. They do not fit beautifully on. And look at that, how that sticks up. That's like a, a, a Batman you'd find at Kmart for Mattel for like $29. And I got to tell you, it upsets me even as I'm talking about it because this figure, not going on secondary market, just buying it as it is right now, costs you about $470 when all is told and done, maybe a little more, but shipping and handling costs you over $470, almost $500. And for almost $500, guys, I think we deserve a cape that really fits right on there, and it fits easily on, so anybody can put it on. You'd have to be a rocket scientist to learn how to put this cape on. Also, the material of the cape is terrible to me. It's like some kind of a matte, feltish type um, material. I got a DC Direct Batman Begins about uh, eight years ago when Batman Begins came out, 10 years ago, and it had the same almost type feel to it. And that's a DC Direct for 100 bucks. If I'm spending almost $500 on a, on, a, on a Batman figure, 
he should have at least a leathery texture, some type of leathery feeling, looking bat, baddish texture, feeling cape. They can do that. It's all doable. They just didn't want to go the extra mile with it. Also, the cape is so long, it, it, it just drags on the ground. Like, and realistically, in real life, he would trip over this thing every time. It drags on the floor like a rug. And I know they want it to be big so you can get it in all kind of dramatic poses. They still could have done that and still made it just touch right to the ground instead of all the way flowing on the ground like he's a king's robe almost. Look at that. That thing is longer than Thor's robe or the new Superman cape, anything. And that's, that's just ridiculous. They could have done a lot better with the texture and the length of this cape. So once again, guys, uh, I've seen action figures that cost less with better stuff on it. I think what you're paying for at Hot Toys is one, you're paying for the sculpt, the sculptor they have to pay for. You're paying for the licensing of them doing a, a, prop, a popular movie license. I'm sure they had to pay a lot for that. But for the actual stuff, and you're paying for all the accessories, the cute little accessories, the pulse rifles and all that stuff, they're, they're, you're charging for that. But when it comes to the actual figure, it looks nice, and you know what? I gotta admit, it looks kinda cool. But kinda cool for $500 doesn't cut it. You wanna be blown away when you take it out and hold it and you say, wow, this is fantastic. I've seen figures that are actually cheaper and better made on some of these things. And you know, I'm a, uh, I'm, when I'll shout from the rafters with joy when Hot Toys gives us a good toy, but I also will call them on the carpet when they give us something that's subpar for the price they're asking. That's the deal. If this figure cost about $200 or cheaper, $250 or cheaper, then you say, you know, it's really great. It looks fantastic. I love it. But for $500, you're going to nitpick. And, you're gonna, and you shouldn't be able to find things so readily, easily to nitpick about on this figure. So that's my two-minute gripe on this thing as we take a look at the figure. Let's take another look at the figure in a pose. And here he is, boys and girls. Here's the... One fourth scale, 18 inch Dark Knight Rises by Hot Toys on his base. And then a nice little pose. I put, a, put him in a quick pose for you guys. I don't know that I'll keep him in this pose, but this is just a quick pose for you guys to see what he looks like on his base. And this is without a stand because I don't usually like to use those, cra those uh, crouch grabbing stands. They kind of dis detract from the overall pose. For me personally, I know a lot of guys like to use them and need to use them for wherever they put their, their uh, figures, but I don't use them. So I just have them standing on here freestanding. And you see the Joker mask on the girder. You see the Batarang. You see the Bat emblem. You see the Scarecrow mask. You see him in a pose. The Pulse Rifle with the light on. Bane's ripped off mask in his hand. And there he goes. Now, while we have you on here, let's do a little size comparison so you can tell some of you guys at home that don't know what a one-fourth figure scale is. This is a 12-inch Batman I'm going to put up here. I'm going to put this 12-inch Batman up here. This is a 12-inch Batman. This, and that's a one-sixth scale, 12-inch, one-sixth scale figure. That's a Batman figure. This is a DC Direct Batman, about a six-and-a-half-inch figure. So there you see. This guy comes in about 18 inches. This is about 12 inches. And this is about six and a half inches. So that's a scale comparison. Oh, I just forgot. Let me show you guys a little special guest star that just flew into our studios to be in this. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Our special guest star flew into the studios today. They're going to have a little conversation about the new movie, Batman vs. Superman, or Superman vs. Batman for the new Man of Steel 2. I call this the conversation. See, and when you stand up next to this NECA guy, then it just kicks off and it looks wonderful. I love that. Isn't that cool? That's a nice little visitation over there for the Man of Steel from NECA. Compliments of NECA and their one-fourth scale Man of Steel figure. Well, my overall impressions of this figure, I gotta admit, guys, as I played with it a little more and got it into a pose I liked and got the base set up, I kind of like the overall presentation. You know, you ever had something that you look at it from a far distance and you go, wow, that looks really badass and great. And then as you get up to it or you get to hold it, you go, wow, it's, it's actually really cheaply made or it's actually really not what I thought it is, like, as great as I thought it was when I saw it from a distance. Uh, that's what this is for me a little bit. When it's in a presentation mode like this, it looks fantastic. And on a shelf and in a case, it's going to look really badass and nice. But when you play with it and you look at it real close, you start to see the cheapness. And the only reason I, I gripe at all about the cheapness of it, and I don't really mean cheapness, but the, the quality level of things, is because this, like I said earlier, 
that this figure will run you normally without any secondary pricing about $500. For most people, that's like a car payment. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of money to spend on an action figure. Uh, so I feel I have the right to nitpick and call Hot Toys when they do something that I'm not agreeable with. So that's why. But otherwise, a lot of this on a very nice seam, a very nice look at it, the first impressions of it, it's a nice looking presentation with all the stuff they gave you at Hot Toys today, all the accessories and the fun stuff. It looks like a very nice presentation. So I, I enjoy that part of it. But should you buy it? Hmm. I'll be very straight and honest with you guys. If you like all things Batman, and when I say this, I mean if you collect things Batman from the 1966 shows, from the Michael Keaton movies, the Val Kilmer movies, everything Batman, the animated series, that's what your toy collection and your action figure collection looks like, all things Batman, then I would say, honestly, for the price point, pass on it and, and just get the deluxe one six. 12 inch scale Batman which is a really good figure and put that in your collection and then there you have your Dark Knight series piece of the puzzle for your collection but if you really really are a die hard um, Dark Knight movie series uh, collector you must have all things part of the Dark Knight and that Christopher Nolan, uh, Christopher Nolan uh, trilogy you must have everything then yeah, get the coin and he's going to fit nice and he will pop that collection. He will pop your Dark Knight collection out a little bit. So yeah, spend the coin if you have it and get it. And it will be a nice addition to that Dark Knight series. But other than that, I would say just get yourself a good solid uh, Hot Toys 1-6 one, one scale 12-inch Dark Knight uh, figure, whichever one you like. Or even a Michael Keaton figure, which was really great, the 1-6 six, the six scale Michael Keaton figure from the 1998, a 1989 Batman uh, movie. And get that and put that in your, your collection and call it a day. Uh, this guy is big, he's great looking, he looks really nice with the Man of Steel Necker 1 4th scale 18 inch Superman figure. And for that, get it and try it out. Um, I hope you enjoyed us, enjoyed us today on this wonderful uh, edition of Gifted Monkey. We got a chance to look at the Hot Toys 1 4th scale Dark Knight 18 inch action figure. Let me know what you guys think. Do me a favor, comment below and let me know what you think. Do you love this figure? You think I was a little wrong or too rough on Hot Toys for this figure? Let me know because you know I'll get back to you. And what's your favorite Hot Toys Batman figure so far? Let me know. And remember, like us if you like us. Check us out on Pinterest. Check us out on our Facebook page, Gifted Monkey TV. And just leave a whole bunch of comments everywhere you see us because I love talking to you guys. You guys are awesome. So, take care, and remember, collecting toys, even a one-fourth scale Hot Toys Dark Knight Rises action figure, can be as fun as a barrel of monkey, but respect the monkey. Play nice. Take care, guys.